All right, we are live for the Mike and Mario Show Friday edition. Excited to be back. Looking forward to connecting and covering some prior events as well as looking ahead as to what lies ahead. But before we do that, Mario, how you doing, my friend? Yeah, I'm doing well. And you, Mike? I'm doing well, my friend. I am doing. I'm actually. I'm actually kind of excited. It's the weekend, so you know, as always, get a chance to unplug and relax a little bit. But before we do that, we gotta uh, just cover some prior events and just talk our way through this nonsense. And uh, based upon all the activity happening, some a lot of things happening in the UK, but the energy sector uh, should be the primary focal point for a lot of people because uh, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that uh, is starting to wear his head above water and it happens to do with all the debt and margin calls and all types of things like that so we'll get into that but uh, before i move forward as well I want to welcome anybody to the community uh definitely make sure you share your thoughts ideas in the chat and we'll definitely get to those uh, when There's we open up low blood pressure as a question uh -oh, uh, we'll mario have you ever visited a giant statue of the son of mary in rio i have it's the christ uh, Re the redeemer statue I've been up there. I, I went. I actually took my wife there uh -huh. uh, about twenty years ago when she first went to Brazil. Yeah, but uh, it's the big uh, statue of Christ. Yeah, it, it's quite impressive up there. It's a great view. They have a. They have several of those statues throughout a lot of those Latin American countries. So I've never been to one, but I've seen pictures mm -hmm. of them all. But hopefully one day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So let's jump right in, man. Um, so it looks like as of right now, the energy crisis in the UK, as well as in Europe, is is pretty much is, is making head news and the possibility of bailouts is underway. So it looks like as of now, there's going to be some intervention due to the derivatives and things of that nature associated with that. So we'll jump into this headline here and uh, just, you know, chime in on it and keep moving right along. But uh Looks like due to margin calls. So here's a, I guess, a low ball figure, one trillion. So it says Europe's power producers face a one trillion in margin calls, and so this definitely, this is a very low ball figure in relation to the total amount of possible derivatives and things out there associated with all the stuff they've packaged together. But what were your, what were your thoughts when you saw this? Yeah, you sent me that that story, and uh, I went through it. And one of the guys uh, from one of the uh, trading companies was saying, oh, this is not a problem. Uh, mm -hmm. The government uh, will get their money back, you know, and uh, everything is great. <laughs> but if everything was great, why would they need to uh, ask the government for financing uh, to, to, you know, to backstop these, the, uh, these uh, margin accounts? Right. If it was so smooth and everything, uh, the banks would be, and their brokers would be financing it. And this just goes to show that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me derivatives are uh you know a, a powder keg mm -hmm. well as warren buffett said many years ago they're weapons of uh financial mass destruction <laughs> and uh here in the uh, uk we've already had a bailout yeah. uh, of well the whole country uh, they've bailed out all people uh, who have an energy bill mm -hmm. uh, our bills are supposed to go on average from like Two thousand pounds a year to almost six thousand by next year, and now yeah. the government has uh, thrown uh, tens of billions of pounds, yeah. if not hundred, you know, like almost two hundred billion pounds, to basically cap uh, prices for uh, not just consumers but for businesses. Yeah, and I, I have a, a bad feeling it could backfire because if energy prices uh, continue to go higher. Mm -hmm in the wholesale market in the world market uh that bill of 150 billion which is what has been calculated for the uk yeah could go to 300 500 uh, i mean and our gdp is two trillion so uh, the i'm not surprised that by one trillion that's for the eu wide which mm -hmm. is not doesn't include the uk and, right. and we've seen that other countries like denmark and i think sweden they've had to come and bail people out Right, uh, energy right. companies out so uh yeah it just goes to show that the, it's inflate or die and, right. and uh this fiat currency system uh yeah it, it leads to these uh imbalances and and all the speculation and derivatives yeah now one of my concerns has been just a mention of of price capping and so i'm i'm trying to figure i'm trying to really wrap my head around the whole idea of price caps so you mentioned with the UK, you guys were subsidized in a sense and given, I think it was a 400 pounds 
you know, it was, yeah, it was that, that was, was that was before that was before the new plan, or and that's going to stay as well. Uh -huh. you know, Four hundred pounds. That's going to cost. I'm not sure billions as well. But this is on top of that because the four hundred pounds was not going to make a difference anymore. Yeah. So um, the other thing we uh, about price capping you just mentioned back in the early '70s, Richard Nixon tried to uh, cap prices, mm -hmm. and uh, I think New York City tried to cap rentals. Uh, and I just saw that a city somewhere I British forgot Columbia. where. Yeah. Yeah, British Columbia, two percent. Uh, all that does is going to create more shortages <laughs> and and higher higher costs or prices. Yeah, yeah. Price caps and bailouts. That's the new method uh, of intervention in the system. It looks like so. Here, just real quick, I'll thumb through some headlines uh, in reference to some figures here. And so we just, I guess, officially got word that the EU mentioned that they will not step in for now to help subsidize and paper over the energy companies, uh, but they will rather prefer to focus on the banks. But it looks like uh, the UK has stepped in. What looks like it says forty billion in short-term liquidity. Uh, for well, the that's for uh, that's for the companies, yeah, for the wholesale companies. So this is you know, but once again, forty billion. That's a temporary stopgap that I probably yeah. get them through how long? A month, yeah. maybe a week. Uh, I mean, who but knows? The, uh, the uh, total package people think with the for the consumer as well and the uh, companies is going to be about one hundred and fifty billion. Mm. Mm. So and then also Denmark is stepping in uh, for their own sake with 13.5 billion. So that's two there. And then you also mentioned Switzerland is stepping in as well. Uh, I don't think so. Switzerland, Sweden did. Uh, oh, Sweden. Okay. Sweden was the first country that came out last weekend. Yeah. Their prime minister came out on, on Saturday and, uh, uh, you know, blew the whistle, so to speak, on the problem. Uh, but uh, maybe the EU uh, is not doing it for now because the expectation that all these countries would do that is actually driven energy prices down. So yeah. it might have helped uh, the companies to kind of cover their shorts, but I don't think it's going to last very long. Right. So here's a headline here. Sweden and Austria start building out energy companies. Yeah, Austria as well. Yeah. <laughs> a Minsky moment. <laughs> so, yeah, like once again, papering over the problem has never worked, but yet it's just a temporary measure to, to, to get them to what? And in, in the midst of all this, they're still looking to rate uh, hike rates. And, and so it's like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, here in the UK, uh, it's so uh, twisted because. What the price capping is going to do, it's going to lower the uh, CPI because mm -hmm. artificially, right? So mm. they're saying, oh, now the Bank of England can uh, doesn't have to raise rates as much because inflation won't be as high. Mm. But even the Keynesians now are waking up and saying, wait, more government spending, mm -hmm. it's going to create inflation. And they're right for, <laughs> for a change. But uh, I think the government is also desperate because we have... The UK Treasury ish, issues something called index linked guilt, mm -hmm. uh, which is a government bond linked to the uh, retail price index, which is going running at 12%. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and it's probably going to be at 20, was going to be at 20% by the end of the year. Yeah. And what that does, it increases the government's uh, uh, interest bill massively. Yeah. Uh, because we've got 500 billion in, in these. Um, indexing guilts so if rpi goes 20 percent, you could basically see their interest costs by go up by 50 to 100 billion which is huge right so by doing, this, by doing this they're going to artificially lower the rpi uh -huh. at the same time they're growing the debt it's crazy so yeah so exactly how so has there been any talk on how they're going to service that well, like, there's been a lot of uh, talk about it in the last few weeks, but now they'll be able to service it because they're just kicking the can down the road by capping the prices. Yeah. And by capping the prices, the CPI and RPI are going to be lowered artificially, but they won't have to pay as much interest. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, this 150 uh, bailout is supposed to be financed through taxes over 10 years. So they're just like... Yeah, it's really bad solving a, a debt problem with more debt <laughs> and, and trying to keep prices down with more debt. Now, how will I, I saw? So I guess is it trust? Trust the new the new prime, prime minister. minister or whatever. So mm. 
how is so I'm hearing they're going to try to begin frack, uh, fracking again and trying to yeah. become, but once again, it won't be in time to do anything. But oh, yeah, this is going to take years, I right? Mean, so it sounds good on the surface, but yeah, literally, like they're just playing, just they're just playing games with this. Like it, was, it's, it doesn't yeah. make sense one bit to me, but it's their way of trying. This is her, this is her, uh. Big uh, rally the country together. We can do this if we, you know, come yeah. together. <laughs> well, I did an interview a few weeks ago with a uh, an MP actually, but he's now in the House of Lords, uh -huh. Peter Lilly, and he was one of the uh, only five MPs who voted against the Climate Change Act of two thousand and eight mm -hmm. uh, because he could see that uh, it was going to disrupt the energy sector. They yeah. focused on these renewables. You know, and they might be interesting, but uh, they have to be subsidized, you know, wind turbines and uh, a solar. And they, they're not as reliable as uh, fossil fuels or coal yeah. or. And uh, yeah, he was one of the only five MPs. And, and, and I'm afraid for the last 14 years, we haven't uh, as a country uh, built the in infrastructure or uh, started the. Uh, you know, fracking or oil and gas. Yeah. And it's totally irresponsible and it's coming home to roost. So yeah. this thing about starting to fracking, you know, there's also a lot of opposition here by the uh, green green people. Environmentalists. Fracking. So it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Now, that's one of the benefits, I guess, of the, of the, of the, the previous administration here in the U.S. to where we were able to run on that, you know, a couple of years of, you know, energy independent and things of that nature un until all that was undone. And I don't see us going back, even, a, even as our strategic reserves are depleted. Uh, I, of course, just I can't help but think how all this is planned precisely for a much more sinister agenda. And uh, we're going to find out how this plays out. But to, to piggyback on that. Uh, energy costs, overall cost of living is still continuing to climb despite all the papering over and maneuvering and changing the rules of the game. So I wanted to mention briefly that uh, little telegram uh, because I think this has a lot to do with it as well. So uh, this is just a little quick little excerpt from Doug Casey's telegram page, but he puts out the possibility or probability rather of the agenda eventually boiling down to the confiscation of property if people can't uh, pay their bills and you mentioned the uk is not covered is not included in that here in the u.s yeah. it's not as it's not the same way as well yeah because uh utility prices according to this uh, report uh, in the uk is an unfunded liability so they can't come after your uh, property but it, it could indirectly uh, lead to people losing their homes because if you can't pay uh, your utility bills and, and or food food bills, and then you can't pay your mortgage. Mm -hmm. You might end up uh, homeless anyway. Right. So, so the point is, either your property will be seized from you, or just by sheer bankruptcy or something of that magnitude, you will lose it. And according to this list here of countries, you know, he, he looks at uh, just predominantly France, Sweden, the Netherlands, UK, Spain, whatever, and Romania apparently has the it's it's written on the books to where. Uh, utility companies can come and can directly through a bailiff and does not need to have a judge decision. No other trial needed can actually, you know, take you out your house and basically take your house from you type of thing. So I'm thinking like that's a different way of, you know, making sure people don't own nothing and they won't be happy with that. <laughs> yeah. Whatsoever. I mean, Romania, yeah, it's, um, it's not, it is in the European country. I'm not to, trying to denigrate it, but it's not really like an, I, I'm not sure if it's that significant, mm -hmm. but yeah, uh, which is probably the case. But that's the reason I mentioned it out. Me, reason maybe I maybe, out maybe Andrew Tate has to worry about it. <laughs> is that, that where that's he's from? But no, he's he, American, but he he lives in Romania. Oh, okay. So I, I follow. I him he's all right. I think he's uh, <laughs> a few Ferraris and stuff like that. Uh, let's keep moving. So uh, let me get to the next subject matter. Um, so out of just curiosity's sake. Uh, I am curious because uh, you mentioned before we went live about just the overall consensus of what's happening in the UK right now. And so from an economy standpoint, how how will this changing of the guard from the monarchy standpoint, because we talked about this before, it not it being separate, but then all inclusive at once. Like, how do you think this shift at all will impact anything? It, it doesn't even matter, really, other than just tradition and 
stuff like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is tradition. And uh, I don't think uh, it will matter, should matter too much uh, mm -hmm. policy wise or economic wise, because the monarch here is supposed to be apolitical, just like the queen was. She didn't really uh, give her opinion on on almost anything really she was she just did what she had to do as a head of state but there are questions uh being asked ab about king charles i have to think about saying that because it always used to be prince charles but um yeah because he he in the past he's uh given out his opinion a lot about things especially like the environment he's been he's gone he's attended the world economic forum and he's known klaus schwab for decades mm -hmm. so people are actually in the mainstream uh wondering is he gonna you know shut his mouth and and be like impartial yeah. uh but economic wise yeah there's the change of the currency and the coins uh and we were speaking before, maybe they could use that as an excuse to phase out cash completely. Yeah. But I don't think they're going to do that. Uh, I yeah. think they will uh, bring in new uh, banknotes and coins with uh, uh, King Charles' uh, head on it. Yeah. Um, because I, I, people still use a lot of cash in this country. Right. So. And I, I would think from a legacy standpoint, uh, even though we're entering very uncertain times from the global monetary standpoint, it's still from a family traditionary standpoint to have your own currency, like where your face is on the coins and everything like that is something that they, they're going to at least give them that privilege before they shift into. Well, something else. the thing is, it's not just the family it's it's the country. It's the way, you know, uh, some people say, well, why don't we become a Republic here? And uh, I think there are a lot of people who are pro uh, would like that. But uh, mm. I think changing from, uh, monarchy to a republic or would be <laughs> make a changing you know getting out of the eu look like a picnic yeah. because this country has been like a a monarchy for a thousand years and mm -hmm. a, a lot of the rules regulations uh everything is to do with the crown so you change one thing it could disrupt everything i'm not saying I, <laughs> i'm pro anything i'm just observing so i don't think it's as easy uh, to to change things but uh i don't think uh, it's gonna the the economy is, is already going down the drain here it's not gonna change anything yeah so uh and, and the whole of the eu as well is going down the drain right uh, i was watching i was watching a video earlier of uh, of uh from 2020 when the whole build back better uh verbiage was put out there by all politicians of some kind and prince and charles at the time was basically reading off a script as to the things that he were told told to say to where I'll find it very hard to believe that he stays out of the political scene because he mentioned about we need to build back. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So yeah, he's going to be uh, speaking uh, in about at the top of the hour, his first uh, speech to the nation. So uh, I was talking to my wife. I said, I hope he doesn't mention Build Back Better. And she, <laughs> and she said, he better not. Uh, you know, that would be the worst, uh, the worst thing for him to say in that first speech. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's uh, let's turn to some some more uh, informative uh, monetary news. Let's, let's get on some metal. So I want to share your thoughts, share about, about Robbie's, uh, Rafi's uh, newsletter and what this is all about, because I think there's some detailed information here. Yeah, I, I highly recommend uh, people uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel. It's called Rafi Farber. Mm -hmm. and, and also, if you're interested in the markets and trading, you, you should check him out at Seeking Alpha, the end game investor. So uh, I, I've taken some of his written uh, today uh, about the fact that uh, the silver on COMEX is really draining, mm -hmm. uh, really falling out of bed. And, and also the uh, silver in the LBMA is very low. And uh, he's found out why uh, gold is flowing out as well. It's be because there's a 15% premium uh, uh, for gold uh, in India. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I spoke about this earlier this week that there's a premium to uh, for Shanghai gold versus yeah. Comex or LBMA gold of just over 1%. So I, I think a lot of the gold, though, is actually, he's right, is flowing to uh, to India. And uh, that's a sign that uh, the gold uh, price in the West is uh, 
for Indians is very cheap. And, and, and probably because we're throwing so much paper at it, the banks are. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that, that's a good thing for us uh, stackers and people should continue to stack. Yeah, uh, and it looks like people continue to stack silver, and, and eventually that that's going to put a rocket up uh, the price. I think we're already seeing premiums for uh, junk silver at uh, the highest since the 08 crisis, around forty <sighs> percent. Now I wonder, like with this premium that you're referring to out of India, um, how much does this have to play into the new exchange that they're? setting up because they're they're trying to be a, ba a basically a price setter uh for the east uh, in a collaboration i'm sure with russia and china as well but I, i'm assuming that this just draws us closer to some type of event to where uh they're going to make an official announcement that in relations to having gold be yeah. a part of the system sooner than later and i'm not that, sure uh, i'm not sure whether this premium is really uh, i'm not sure if they have uh gotten their uh international bullion exchange in india up and running yeah but the their spot price their domestic price seems to be higher mm -hmm. and uh, i agree with you uh you've got shanghai you're gonna have moscow uh, mm -hmm. uh world uh what's it called moscow world uh, standard yeah and then you're gonna have the indian uh lbma i think a lot of gold is gonna flow out of the lbma lbma might become an irrelevance uh or maybe just because now it's like the top dog. Maybe ah. not an irrelevance, but it, it, it will be, uh, you know, just one of the uh, exchanges. Right. It, it, it's go, it's going to be hard to continue to try to pull the paper game over on the rest of the world as far as that. Yeah. using the futures market as a price setting mechanism. Oh, yeah. Because they're dealing with physical yeah. over there and we're still pushing paper over here. Yeah. And it's going to be hard to keep that lie up. I think the uh, the drop in the currencies like the euro, the the pound, and the yen, yeah. and the Korean won is a reflection of that, because if gold is flowing out of the heart of this currency fiat currency system, and I would say the LBMA is a very important part of that, you know that that's going to make those currencies become worth less and less, and eventually I think the dollar is going to get hurt too. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chris, this, uh, super chat here, uh, it says, what will happen to the price of oil? If Saudi Arabia comes out, says we will know, we will not be selling, selling oil in Chinese yuan, yen, euro, rupee, rubles, and USD. Thanks. We will now be, Ill. now be selling oil rather in Chinese yuan, yen, euro, rupee, rubles, uh, and USDs. Uh, what will happen to the price? Well, in what currency though? <laughs> yeah. That's so the, cause it's still priced in dollar terms. So uh or it could be priced in all different currencies uh, i right. would say that uh, the price in dollars relative to all the those other currency he is mentioning would probably go up the price of do uh, oil in dollars because there would be less demand for, for dollars the dollar would become worth less so we would buy less oil uh, where the price would go i can't tell you yeah and, and i think i guess the 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 primary difference would just be having all those alternatives makes, you know, a single currency, i.e. the petrodollar system null and void, just because you can now better determine what suits you best in accordance with what country, what, co what country you're doing business with and their exchange rates of yeah. the currencies. And, and, I, I, and I think it will become more important to know what is behind the currency, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. right now people haven't had to worry about it because they say, oh, it's the dollar. But and, and that's why where gold comes in, and, and that's why I think eventually the West is going to have to own up to how much gold they really have, or else they they won't be able to buy anything from anywhere, anywhere around the world. And we're seeing the BRICS countries uh, buy a lot of gold because I think they know they'll their currencies will have to have some credibility. Yeah, and I wonder, and my assumption would be. Based upon our that question, Chris is also because we're hearing more and more about, you know, other nations looking to join the BRICS, and so Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Turkey, those are all nations that actually offer the world some form of real world resources from the ground, rather than just you know instruments and IOUs of nothing. So, uh, I'd imagine they already have something something worked out for the near future. It's just a matter of when. And then let's not mention or forget that uh, Xi and Putin meets next week. 
And so I'm interested to see how that plays out. And also, I'm sure you've been paying attention to the, you know, little clips that's come out from uh, President uh, Vladimir Putin over the last oh, yeah. couple of days and all the little sound bites people are using. And it's like, wow, he's, he's, he's not yeah. afraid to let his voice be heard. <laughs> yeah, he's really letting us know, uh, well, the people that are willing to listen to him yeah. because in the West. Very few people are listening to him, but I think it's going to cost people dearly. He's yeah. telling us, you know, we're going for another currency. Uh, the dollar, the euro, and the pound, and the yen, these are these currencies ha are losing credibility because they're creating them, you know, out of thin air with right. unbacked debt. He, he called it, he called that back in, I think, uh, June at the uh, SPIF conference. And this time again at, at uh, Vladivostok at the, uh, uh, East, uh, is it East Asian uh, Economic Conference? He said yeah. the same thing. I was uh, actually looking, listening to several of those sound bites there. And as you mentioned, just his willingness to call out those currencies, primarily the unfriendly nations, and saying how basically they're, you know, they're, they're worthless. And I, so that right there lets me know that they've already shifted away from those currencies. And then the report earlier this week about, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, yuan and Russian trade and oil prices solely yeah. not, no, no longer using dollars, period, which I thought they dialed back percentages before, but I guess like it's official now that that's well, what we're done know, with. I'll give you an idea of how what could help the pound, for example, because back in the uh, mid-70s, I think it was the first time they discovered oil in the North Sea, 1975. And then by the early 80s, the North Sea oil started picking up and uh, the pound, for example, dropped to uh, in 1985 to 103 against the dollar. Mm -hmm. But but then the oil started flowing and the country did well, but it, it took 10 years for that to develop. So it gives you an idea. Yeah. So all the talk of uh, we're going to increase fracking and stuff, it is going to take at least five probably 10 years to get that on board. And um, so I'm, what I'm trying to say here, all is not lost, but at the, t at the moment, things are not looking good for the UK or, or the EU. Right. All right. And eventually, and eventually the United States of America, just because we're in, not, we're, we're not in a much better position than anybody else other than at this current moment, still having the reserve currency that the world is flocking to as, you know, everything else is based upon in price and dollar terms but at some point and i think after they announce or whatever 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 is coming things will definitely shift relatively fast but here's a little headline from earlier this week it says russia's gas is planning to sell gas to china in both rubles and yuan to shift away from the euro in hmm. this regard here so throw the dollar in there as well and then there's another one uh we'll see what happens with this one but putin and g plan to meet again as relations with the west fray so uh, you better believe every time they meet, it's usually an, an announcement following, and uh, yeah, we'll see how that plays out. But uh, let's get to some questions, I guess. We got a couple more articles here, but if you want, we can jump into some yeah, questions. No problem. Uh, so feel free to throw out some thoughts, ideas, suggestions, and questions, and we'll just jump on and share our two cents. Rolf Steiner that. says uh, uh, that's the official USA gold reserves. Um, what's that? Zero? <laughs> Where was Jonas at? Rolf Steiner, five thirty-two. Is uh, the right. Bank of England trustworthy? Well, I don't think uh, he's asking that question. I don't think Venezuela thinks it's trustworthy because <laughs> they they haven't released their gold. And, and uh, in nineteen thirty-eight, the Bank of England allowed uh, the Germans to confiscate Czechoslovak gold when they invaded <laughs> Czechoslovakia. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a here's a interesting, it's a funny question. Who would you trust to look after your kids for a day? <laughs> Putin or Brandon? <laughs> oh boy. Oh uh, my goodness. Uh yeah, I would neither one of them. <laughs> yeah. One of them. Yeah, I didn't want any either one of them to look. You know, it is an amazing how if I had to choose though, I would choose the the guy from uh, Moscow, I think. And that's the thing, like it, from from the Western standpoint and the way the media paints him, he's such a dictator, da, 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 whatever. Yeah. But when you look at both sides of the story, you follow East, Eastern media as well. He's just a normal guy who's op apparently operating in the best interest, interest of his country. And a lot of the, I guess, the, the moral principles that he is enforcing in his own country lets me know that he's not completely sold out to the 
agenda, the, all the acronyms, mm. the LBGTQ, and he's very, you know, outspoken against those matters in his country, which, you know, to me, lets me know he's still yeah. standing on some type of moral foundation, somewhat. So well, he some must, people, not, must not be that bad uh, of a guy. Some people say that he's uh, uh, part of the World Economic Forum and, mm-hmm. and a Freemason, but uh, yeah, like you, I, I've listened to what he's uh, talked about for, for Russia, mm-hmm. and he seems to be uh, looking after the interests of the Russian people, which seems good to me. Right. Because imagine, I mean, so will we have much of anything to talk about, really, if he was in, in bed completely and outright going the globalist way, you know, everything in alignment completely with the clause, then what will be the drama? Would there be like any gas issue? I mean, so A, they need all this. They need this, you know, good guy, bad guy narrative that helps fuel things. But still, it's like, you know, if they were all lock and step on the same game plan, then, you know, our job wouldn't be as enjoyable. Anyway, <laughs> let's keep it going. Uh, what else we got out there? Feel free to throw out some thoughts. Uh, here's one from Matthew. It looks like, what will happen to the futures market when a more than significant amount of gold is withdrawn from the comex the crimex what well you just market well i i think it's going to lose a lot of uh credibility mm-hmm. and uh i think the the futures price will have to uh to go up in order mm-hmm. to yeah it will go up because <laughs> unless it goes up uh they're going to be completely uh empty of gold and silver for that matter as well on comex and how can you <laughs> say that you have a a gold and futures uh, exchange with no gold and silver? Right, right. So, mm. so they would go out of business mighty fast, or they would literally have to accept actual the actual free market price of those metals that they've suppressed for so long. Which, and as I always say, if every monetary unit, i.e., fiat currency, is held accountable in metal terms, then you know what will the price actually look like who i mean shit, we don't even know <laughs> oh my goodness it'll be through the roof uh what else we got out there uh uk and- financial prep awakening to mike uh uh what, what do you think what- the global financial reset event will be my guess is next month um i think we're witnessing it in phases right now so i Will there be a, a a a like an actual Friday bank holiday? We open up Monday or don't open up Monday type of event. Uh, it's possible, but I think everything we're witnessing now is incremental steps to get us to that point. Yeah. Like I don't think they want like an outright single event because that'll throw them off. Like so, I think they're still doing things incrementally, and we'll see what it pans up to. But as far as putting a time frame and a date on it, uh, yeah, I'll be wrong. I mean, just say next month. I don't think that's you know that's. Yeah, that's wishful thinking for some because some people want it to happen right now, but I don't think they want it that bad because they still got a lot. I think they still have a lot they would like to get accomplished in this current paradigm. So that's my two cents. But what do you think, Mario? Well, I actually think uh, June 17th, uh, Mm -hmm. 2022 was when it started, Mm -hmm. not for us, but for the rest of the world, non West, with that uh, speech. Putin made in uh, St. Petersburg at the Spieth conference. Mm, yeah. well, I, I think that was the the, the shot across the bow. And, yeah. and I think it will be remembered. And I spoke about that this week in one of my videos. It will be like August 15th, 1971 and Nixon closing the gold window. And I think back then uh, people didn't hear, you know, they heard that. And I don't think uh, the next day they said, oh, this is it. Uh, this is a, a complete end of the Bretton Woods, it took a year or two for things to uh, to evolve and people to realize how important it is. So uh, I think it's already started. Yeah. And uh, the West, of course, is trying to fight that. But it but it's already having impacts on, on the on our currencies. Look at the uh, the euro has come from like above 110. It's now below one. Uh, yeah. The pound has dropped from above 120. It's almost at uh, 114. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so back in 1971, for example, uh, after they uh, closed the gold window, it took two years for uh, all the currencies to float against each other because they still thought that they could keep the currencies fixed against each other, even though there wasn't any gold uh, discipline. So you see these things uh, hap- you know, could have happened in June, but it will take... Uh, maybe a year or two for us to realize how 
important it was and for it to have an impact. Yeah. Or, I mean, how would you, I would also want to lump in when uh, Russia, right after the Ukraine situation unfolded, the sanctions were put on. And then literally within that time frame, Russia started mentioning gold and they start buying gold and setting it the, the gram price mark for a gram at 500 rubles. So to me, when I heard all that, I'm like, wow, like, you know, this is the start of something new. So on top of the speech, and their actions there and bringing gold back into the primary spotlight, I think that also will probably go down. Just, I mean, this year in general, but Putin definitely will get the, I don't want to say get the credit for that, but <laughs> he'll be mentioned along with that as well, barring whatever event that might come along that they're going to try to paint him as the, the reason for why we end up, God forbid, going to the world war or some type of crap like that. Anyway, what else we got out here? Uh, Ed, Ed Heyman says, uh, Hammond. Hi Putin. <laughs> Hi Putin. It's, it's just a joke. <laughs> oh, uh, it says, uh, what do you think about Biden's potential ban on proof of work mining equipment? Do you think the BTC will go up due to a limited supply or is it a good time to short? Who S400. Great question. Um, Mario, have you been paying attention to that this week? Not at all. <laughs> so, so white house came out with a, some like a, a little newsletter slash little report, uh, just giving more insight into how they're going to treat the, uh, what I call the consensus war, which they're going to start. And it has to do with proof of work, proof of stake. And so the Ethereum project to me is is, is for the banksters, Jamie Dimon, Ethereum Alliance project. They all, it's for them. And so they're converting next week to proof of stake. And along with that will come a crackdown on proof of work. Mm. And that happens to be led by Bitcoin. And so this little letter that came out the other day mentioned that the need to now address the climate concerns on proof of work projects. And so a lot of people in the social media or crypto sphere are concerned saying that the government is now about to change their tune on proof of mining, which would basically, whatever. So long story short, I do think, and this is a test where we'll find out if, if, if Bitcoin is actually intended to be a free market, free us from the enslavement of the central bankers or not. If it actually, if they succeed at killing proof of work and it flees the country and other nations jump on board and expand their projects, it's not going away, but if they decide to attack it, then that lets me know that they are probably more so against it. And it is anti-banker like it was supposed to be. But if they let this fly by and it doesn't go nowhere and they let both of them exist until they decide to shut both of them down, then I think it's all part of their plan. So as far as whether you're shorter or not, I don't know. I think it's still a lot of room to go lower. So yeah, we ain't seen nowhere near a crypto winter yet. So uh, it's yeah, definitely going to go a lot lower. Texas has become a big uh, place for, uh, Bitcoin mining. mining. Uh, right. It's funny because uh, Ethereum, uh, yeah, you're saying it's going to switch to proof of stake. Yeah. Uh, EOS uh, was proof of stake, and uh, yeah. or it still is, but it hasn't really, uh, you know, gained, gained the uh, the the network uh, effect. Right. I, I mean, I I, I was I thought it was quite interesting EOS, and, and I did invest in it. I got out. Uh, because uh, it was interesting because with proof of uh, proof of stake, uh, there's a lot more scalability. It's a lot faster yeah. uh, than proof of work. But uh, the the downside is it becomes uh, less decentralized because JP Morgan could could own the whole of the Ethereum. Right. Uh, they'll just get the the money from the Fed and right. buy it, which is more than likely what's going to happen. <laughs> And so, yeah, there's so many proof, proof of stake projects out there that, you know, there's a lot of competition out there. So we'll see. But my long term thoughts and projection on the crypto space is that at some point when they are ready to, to ex reveal the reason why uh, they've allowed it to get to this point, it's going to be in a world we don't want to you know want to live in just because they can't have competition. So if it's real competition, they're going to find a way to squash it or, yeah. dis or disincentivize people from using it. Uh, here's a question from uh, Chris says, ECB already saying that they are ready to add liquidity to the banks, i.e. bank bailouts are already waiting in the wings. 100%. Uh, speaking of which, that's the article we didn't get to. <laughs> uh, let me find that article there. Where are we at? Uh, I'll find it one second. But that is a great point there. I wonder if I can find that article. Uh, where is it going? Mario, I think I lost it. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> but uh I can find it. 
Yeah, we were talking about how. Uh, shoot. Well, isn't it a trillion they're talking about that they might have to uh, provide in liquidity? And, and uh, they might not be bailing out the banks directly, but they're bailing out the the energy companies that are uh, funded by the banks. So, yeah, even though Mike spoke earlier that right now they just announced a couple of hours ago that they're not going to go ahead with it, eventually they will. Yeah. So here's the article you're referring to here, Chris. So, yeah, and they announced that today they won't be supporting the energy companies outright just because they got a lot of other things to worry about. And on top of that, uh, Oliver Wright, one of the guys I interviewed before, does a good job posting comments. He's in actually in Germany right now. And he was saying that uh, the ECB at this current moment is being very selective as to their, their alleged tightening processes. But then again, allowing certain countries like Germany, Italy, and Spain, the indebted nations that are having issues uh, freely, I guess, uh, you know, expand their own debt balance sheets or whatnot within their own country as far as, you know, continue to, you know, try to prop up their own economy. In, 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 I'm sorry, independently of the ECB's monetary tightening policies yeah. in a sense. So, it, it, you know, they're countering their individual countries are easing or are easing while the ECB as a whole is preaching the narrative of tightening is what I'm getting mm. at. So, um, but we'll see how it plays out, but eventually they're going to have to come out and help the, the energy, energy company or have more issues. Uh, I'm, we'll sure, uh, I'm sure, I'm uh, sure that another problem, it's like, uh, you know, the little, uh, Dutch boy trying to uh, stop the the dike from uh, bursting. He's put one finger in one hole and then another one bursts. You know, <laughs> I'm sure another problem. Uh, they they'll cap the energy price and then they'll ha we'll have another crisis that we don't know what it's going to be. Exactly. That, that's the kind exactly. of environment we're in. I think. Exactly. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, let me see. Any more questions out there? Let me see. What do you think about platinum? Uh, free thinker, Mario. What do you think about platinum? I don't. I mean, other than just. I don't really follow too often. It's not one of my uh, go-to. I, I don't follow it too much either. I mean, it is a precious metal, uh, but it's more of a, an industrial precious metal. Uh, even though I was offered the other day, I went to the coin shop, and uh, the coin the coin dealer had a little, a really nice uh, commemorative uh, platinum coin. It was about a third of an ounce, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't buy it. Uh, I, I saw someone tweet today that. It's having a tough time. I don't know, break nine hundred, breaking nine hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, so I don't really have a view on yeah, platinum, yeah. but I, I think it will do well eventually with all other precious metals and commodities uh, as inflation uh, continues o over the next decade. Yeah, I do agree. Um, speaking of which, let me uh, just before we get ready to dial back, gotta take a look at those metal prices just because. <laughs> And so, as always, <laughs> we got up almost to almost to nineteen silver, and of course, it was a sell-off. And same with gold. So, uh, yeah. Well, we're still up on the day. Um, you know, uh, this morning, uh, gold almost got up to seventeen thirty, and then the U.S. comes in. Mm -hmm. and you see there at that <laughs> around uh, I don't know eight eight a.m. nine a.m. New York, and they sell yeah. it. That's typical. But it, it's actually rallying back up, which is uh, pretty good. So yeah. I, I've got on my system right now, uh, gold up ten dollars and silver up actually thirty cents mm -hmm. uh, at eighteen eighty one, which is uh, not bad. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, here's a question for you. Mario says, "Are you worried about freezing this winter?" No. Straight and simple. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, it, it's funny because uh, the the UK or London, we are as far north as like Montreal or even north, more north uh, than we're like uh, our uh, latitude is quite far north, but we have the Gulf Stream. So it never really gets, uh, it gets cold in the winter, but never really like uh, sub-zero and mm -hmm. we don't get much snow. But what we get here is it's very damp. But uh, no, I'm not worried about uh, freezing. Uh, I guess if worse comes to worse, uh, you just have to wear more layers, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, we we time our heat, you know, our radiators and heating. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, here's a question. We'll take make this last one. It says, uh, what will be the first big Western country to fully collapse? I would say the UK, actually, financially. Okay. 
Really? Okay. I, yeah. We've got so much debt, not just national debt, but also external debt. So if uh, if our uh, bond yields start going up and our currency keeps going lower and government keeps spending, you know, we're on our own right now. We're not part of the EU anymore. Even when we were in the EU, we are not part of the euro. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think the UK, maybe even Japan, though, you know, the Japanese currency is also. Yeah. And they've got almost 300 uh, percent government debt to GDP. Uh, even though that's mostly uh, owned by uh, the Bank of Japan and Japanese savers, so yeah, we got uh, we got people say Germany, <laughs> Jim, yeah, Italy agrees. <laughs> oh, there's loads of them. Italy did already, I thought. So <laughs> yeah, man. So interesting times ahead. Uh, we have about 45 minutes. Uh, security dial back. It's always good to connect. I uh, hope you guys got some value out of this. Uh, this live stream here is always good to connect and hear from the, from the community. Uh, Manico64 on YouTube, if you haven't, now you know. Uh, any last thoughts you want to leave us, we'll leave us with, Mario, before we sign off? Uh, last thoughts? Uh, <laughs> you got me there. Well, yeah, just uh, the usual, you know, just uh, try to uh, do uh, your own thing. Try mm -hmm. to uh, switch off from a, a lot of what's going on, even though it's difficult. Yeah. And uh, despite the fact that things seem crazy, uh, there's always opportunity uh, in crises mm -hmm. like the Chinese. I think the Chinese word for both are the same is the same. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not the end of the world. And um, you know, keep your head down and uh, keep going. Yeah, exactly. And, and definitely, you know, whatever, wherever you're located, enjoy this last remaining days or weeks or a month of, of good weather. <laughs> before the oh, cold yeah. hit because <laughs> it might true. get real cold <laughs> depending on where you at so but no uh yeah enjoy the weekend man have fun and just you know hug somebody tell them you love them you know right now you never know how long you got uh unfortunately I, i'm not sure if you saw that uh david h smith uh one of the fellow uh patriots in the in a gold gold space i think passed away recently so um yeah you never know how many days you got left so enjoy every moment of it and make sure you give hugs and kisses to the people you love man anyway be blessed, be safe, people, and continue to do what you know best. Get your weight up, get your calories up, and everything in between. Peace. Peace. <laughs>